بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن أستقى الحديث كتاب الله وحسن الحدي حدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ظلالة وكل ظلالة في النار أما بعد So Buddhas, uh, from the end of the last lesson we uh, arrived at the, um, where the Sheikh was um, discussing the, the evidence uh, of the principles and the affairs that we uh, we translated uh, from the uh, explanation of Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan and um, we arrived at the Surah, Surah Al-Asr and the Sheikh mentioned that that's the evidence for all of the four points uh, see, having knowledge which we discussed so the first one was knowledge and we discussed that then we discussed um, acting upon that knowledge then we discussed uh, having, uh, uh, sorry, uh, then we just the third point was um, calling others to that, uh, as in calling others to the deen of Allah, and then the fourth one was call, um, being patient upon any harms, uh, trials, tests, anything that may come um, in, uh, in your path while you are calling others to Allah, while you are seeking knowledge, while you're acting upon it, you be patient. Etc. And you and you're patient upon the harms that come your way. Um, and then the Sheikh said that the um, the evidence for these four affairs is directly from the Quran, and he's and he quoted Surah Al Asr, and that's where we began uh, reading the explanation of the Sheikh regarding the Surah. So we will start from there. So as a reminder, the Sheikh said he said, "Qala ad-dalilu ala dalika qawluhu taala Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim." والأصر إن الإنسان لفي خص إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر. So Surah Al-Asr, we're all familiar with it. And uh, if you just go to the translation, as we did this last week, we know how I mean reading reading the translation again. By time, verily man is in loss, except those who believe in Islamic monotheism and do righteous good deeds and recommend one another to the truth i.e. order one another to perform all kinds of good deeds, al-ma'roof, which Allah has ordained, and abstain from all kinds of sins and evil deeds, al-munkar, which Allah has forbidden, and recommend one another to patience for the sufferings, harms, injuries, which one may encounter in Allah's cause during preaching his religion of Islamic monotheism or jihad, etc. So as we can see, um, that is a pretty much self-explanatory really for everything that we've learned so far from what the Sheikh has explained to us. Anyway, the Sheikh uh, will go into more detail as, as we started uh, explaining um, last week. So he says, he says the, the first, the first is Al-Masalatul Ula. And we go through that. As you can see here. He says, Al-ilm, لِأَنَّ الْإِيمَانَ لَا يَكُونُ إِلَّا بِالْعِلْمِ وَهُوَ مَعْرِفَةُ وَهُوَ مَعْرِفَةُ اللَّهِ أَزَّ وَجَلْ وَمَعْرِفَةُ نَبِيِّهِ وَمَعْرِفَةُ دِينِ الْإِسْلَامِ بِالْأَدِلَّةِ So the first affair from which we extract, extrapolate from the surah is, <clears throat> is having knowledge. So the first step is knowledge, seeking knowledge. And he says, because iman, does, you can't have iman except without knowledge. You have to have knowledge for you to have iman. And he says it is, it is the is is the knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal, and the knowledge of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and the knowledge of the Deen of Islam with evidences. Then the Sheikh moves on. He says, and the second affair, al masalatu thaniyatu, wa amilu salihati hadha al amalu bil bil ilm. So then the second affair is, you know, acting upon that knowledge. So cutting out the righteous deeds, you're, you're cutting out those righteous deeds upon knowledge that you learn. And then the Sheikh mentions Al Mas'ala Tu Thalitha 
وتواصوا بالحق فهذه دعوة إلى العلم والعمل. And then he mentions the third point. He says the third of it is commanding and enjoining one another with the truth, as in the surah that we read, Surah Al Asr. He says for this is calling to uh, calling to knowledge and and action or good deeds. Then he mentions Al Masalatu Rabiatu, the fourth of it. وتواصوا بالصبر على الأذى في سبيل الدعوة إلى العلم والعمل. Then the Shaykh says the fourth point. He says that um, enjoining patience and advising each other and recommending patience and reminding each other of patience upon any harms that you may face whilst calling people to knowledge and acting in you know calling them to knowledge the deen of Allah and acting upon it any harms that come your way you be patient upon it so the shaykh continues and he says there's a bit of grammar here so it might be difficult to really explain in English but I'll, I'll do my best so the shaykh says فَقَوْلُهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَالْعَصَرُ he says الْوَاو وَاو الْقَسَمْ وَالْعَصَرُ اسْمُ مُقْسَمْ بِهِ مُجْرُورْ وَعَلَامَةُ جَرِّهِ الْكَسْرَ وَالْمُرَادُ بِهِ الْوَقْتُ وَالزَّمَانُ so let's just break this down so the, the wow in the surah wal asr wal asr the wow it's um it's called wow wow al qasam so it's when you swear by something like obviously when we swear we only swear by allah and the shaykhs are going to explain this uh, but just for the technical term in the arabic grammar it's called wow al qasam and when you swear by something it's a wow right so that's why you see here wal asr and asr is time yeah so then the Shaykh says, Wal Asr, he says, Al Asr, he says, that's the the noun, right? That's related directly to uh, what's being sworn by. So wow is when you use wow here in this kind of construction, Wal Asr, and it's been, you're swearing by time, but it's Allah who's swearing by time here. He explains, uh, the Shaykh will explain this. So let's carry on. And, and the Shaykh says, the purpose of this here, Wal Asr, and by time, um, it, 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 the purpose of it is 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 to do with time, it's actual time. So in time and space, yeah. <clears throat> the Shaykh continues and he says, "أقسم الله تعالى بالزمان والوقت وهو مخلوق والله جل وعلا يقسم بما شاء من الخلق والمخلوق لا يقسم لا يقسم إلا بالله." والله لا يقسم إلا بشيء له أهمية وفيه آية من آياته سبحانه وتعالى فهذا الزمان فيه عبرة وله أهمية ولذلك أقسم الله بالعصر بالليل إذا يغشى وأقسم بالضحى. so the sheikh explains this now to us in a very clear way. so the sheikh says he says Allah has sworn by time. And it is something that's created. So time, Allah's sworn by time, but he's sworn by something that's created. And, and the Shaykh says, Allah uh, Jalla Wala uh, can swear by whatever he likes from his creation. Anything. However, the creation like us, for example, we can't swear upon anything except Allah. So we can only swear upon Allah. There's a distinct, there's a distinction here which we need to um, make sure that we've got that and understood it. So Allah can swear by anything, any of His creation. For example, here time. However, the creation, like us, we are created. We can only swear by Allah, and that's it. And the Sheikh says. And the reason why Allah has, when Allah swears by something, it has importance to it. That's why. It's a, it's a very important matter and that's why Allah swears by that. He has an, and it has lessons for us to take and learn from what's being mentioned and what's being sworn upon. Okay? So, uh, then the shaykh says um, that it says, and therefore Allah here has sworn by uh, uh, time by time also in in another surah wa bil layli idha yaksha and when the and by the and by the night 
when it envelopes and it covers the day, you know, it becomes fully night. Uh, and Allah has also, there's, uh, in the Quran as well, has uh, sworn by uh, the time period called Ad Duha, which is uh, between uh, a time period between Fajr and Ad Dhuhr. <clears throat> so uh, let's continue. The Shaykhs then continues, he says, Let's continue with this one. So so basically the Shaykh says here, he says, as for the creation, which we mentioned earlier, as for the creation, like us, we are created, we are al-makhluq. He says, for indeed, we, uh, the, 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 cre- the creation, like us, we do not um, swear by anything else except Allah. So we only swear upon Allah. And it's not permissible for us to, uh, you know, uh, say an oath or swear by other than Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, whoever uh, swears by other than Allah, then for indeed he has committed kufr, disbelief, or he has uh, associated partners in worship with Allah. And he also said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, whoever is in a state of swearing and making an oath, for example, swearing, and make an oath, then upon him is to swear by Allah or be silent and not say anything. So then the Shaykh continues and he says, فَاللَّهُ يُقْسِمُ بِمَا شَاءَ وَلَا يُقْسِمُ إِلَّا بِمَا لَهُ أَهَمِّيَةٌ وَفِيهِ لِبْرَةٌ مَا هِيَ لِبْرَةٌ فِي هَذَا الزَّمَانِ الْعِبَرُ عَظِيمَةٌ الْعِبَرُ عَظِيمَةٌ تعاقب الليل والنهار وتقارضهما هذا يأخذ من هذا وهذا يأخذ من هذا يطول هذا ويقصر هذا تعاقبهما على هذا النظام العجيب الذي لا يتخلف ولا يتغير. So the Sheikh says, he says, so therefore Allah, you know, can swear on anything from that from His creation. And he does not swear upon something except that he has great importance and lessons to be taken from it and that we, should, that we can learn from. So what is the lesson to be learned? He says, the Sheikh says, it's the time, it's time. He says, in time, in the time itself, um, in the sphere of time, that there's many great lessons. For example, like the night, you know, uh, uh, succeeds the day and the day succeeds the night and like this and the affair continues like this with the night and the day the day follows the night the night follows the day and it interchanges that, that's how the Sheikh explains so he mentions one example here and he says for example then the day starts to become uh, longer like in our time now each day the day is getting longer yeah and then the other one gets shorter then the other one gets longer and the other one gets shorter and and it follows this uh, procedure and process, amazing process that does not that does not is not late by a day or late by anything, and it doesn't change. It follows exactly each year as as we know, right? Every day and each year and through the seasons, everything you know follows itself, like how the Sheikh explained. <clears throat> and the Sheikh continues and he says, "Hada dalilun, hada dalilun ala qudratillahi subhanahu wa taala." ثم ما يجري في هذا الوقت من الحوادث والكوارث ومن المصائب ومن النعم ومن الخيرات ما يجري في هذا الوقت هذا من الإبر وكذلك فإن الليل والنهار مجال مجال للعمل الصالح قال تعالى وهو الذي جعل الليل والنهار خلفة أي يتعاقبان يخلف هذا هذا لمن أراد أن يذكر أو أراد شكورا وفي بعض القراءات لمن أراد أن يذكر. So the Sheikh he continues and he says so he says so the evidence uh, what is this evidencing what we just read you know about how things change and everything and uh, 
the night and the day, for, as one example. He says, this is showing Allah's ability and power. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then um, with how time, you know, runs, how runs time runs and the occurrences uh, and the occurrences and the things that happen within the time period, uh, uh, etc. And from the uh, calamities that happen um, uh, in the time periods and from the blessings that we see in the time period and from the goodness that we see in, the, in that time period, uh, uh, etc. And he says, and these are all lessons that we, we, can, we can take from these are lessons to be taken from, from what's mentioned. <clears throat> and then the Shaykh continues and says, like that, uh, the night and the day are the domain. And like that, so he says, unlike that, uh, the night and the day are a domain for righteous actions. So like the night as well as the day, they both are domains for us to act righteously. Then the Shaykh mentions uh, uh, a couple of uh, ayahs of the Quran, which um, if we... Go to the translation of the ayahs here. Give us a second, I'll pull that up. <clears throat> yeah, so here we go. So the Sheikh mentions here it's in Surah, uh, Surah Al Furqan, verse 62. Um, and he it is who has put the night and the day in succession for such who desires to remember or desires to show his gratitude. So that's clear from there. So then the Shaykh continues and, and he says, فَلَيْلُ وَالنَّهَارُ كَسْبُ عَذِيمٍ لِمَنْ إِسْتَغَلَّهُمَّ فِي تَعَةِ اللَّهِ يَزَّ وَجَلْ وَمَجَالُ الْعَمَلِ هُوَ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ مَا عِنْدَكَ غَيْرُ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ هما مجال العمل والكسب والكسب الطيب للدنيا والآخرة في الليل والنهار عبر وفوائد لذلك أقسم الله بالعصر. So then the Sheikh says, so um, he says, so the night and the day it is there for you to you know earn and profit from in terms of being obedient to Allah. And it's the domain of acting and carrying out deeds. And that is in the night and the day. You don't have anything other than the night and the day to carry out your actions. So therefore, they are the domains of action and also reaping, uh, you know, uh, that which is pure and good uh, in the dunya and in the akhirah as well. If you carry out righteous deeds, then you benefit in the dunya and you also benefit uh, in the akhirah, in the afterlife. So it says, so in the night and the day are lessons uh, and benefits. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swore by time there in, in, in the surah, swore, swore by time. So let's continue. So then the shaykh says, he says, Ma huwa uh, qasam. So in Arabic grammar, like we mentioned earlier on, we said that there's a wow al qasam, you know, the wow that, that's to do with the qasam that's been made here, and then there's uh, also the ism, uh, the uh, the starting point of our sentence, um, the noun that's re that's directly here in this situation, it was time, so by time, um, and then there's a jawab that comes with it, the answer or the jawab as well, understand that the jawab al qasam, um, and we will, uh, I think you'll understand this better. Uh, once it's been once it's been explained by the Sheikh himself, so we'll continue. It says, "Ma huwa jawab al qasm? Huwa qawluhu in al insan la fi khusr. Al insanu jamiu bani Adam lam yastathni ahdan la la al malu al muluk, wala al ruasa, wala al agniya, wala al fukara, wala al ahrar, wala al abid, wala al zukur, wala al inath." فَأَلْ فِي الْإِنسَانِ لِاسْتِغْرَاقِ كُلُّ بَنِي آدَمْ فِي خَسْرِ أي في خسارة وحلاك أو في خسارة وحلاك إذا ضيعوا هذا الوقت الثمين واستعملوه في معصية الله وفيما يضرهم. So then the Sheikh 
not experienced. So he says the jawab, the jawab al qasim. So what's the outcome if uh, the outcome of the uh, of when swearing by time when Allah swears by time? What's the the sentence that follows it? It is inna al insan la fi khusr. Indeed, mankind is in a state of loss. We we, we read that earlier on the translation. So the Sheikh man, he says so the al insan mankind, all of them, all of bani adam. Nobody's accepted from this. All of Bani Adam. Yeah, there's no exception. So every ruler, king, um, up and down the ladder, the social ladder, everybody. There's nobody who uh, is, is out of this um, uh, or is accepted from it. So uh, the rulers, uh, people who are in positions of power, uh, the rich, the poor, the free, uh, the servants, uh, the captives, uh, the men, the women, everybody. As Sheikh says, and he says, so the Al here, Al Insan, he mentions Al here, uh, when Al is used at this, it's, 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 it's for the reason of encompassing all people, everyone, whoever comes under the, the, the meaning of Insan, all of them, everybody, it doesn't matter if they're rich or poor or, uh, free or not, or, you know, as we've, uh, we've mentioned here, uh, when the Sheikh has mentioned, uh, Hafidullah. So it says, all of Bani Adam are in a state of loss. They're in a state of loss and destruction if they waste the time. They waste the time, which time is, you know, they say time is gold, you know, uh, or, you know, uh, and, you know, time is of, es uh, time is of the essence, as people use that example as well in English. You know, time is, uh, is, is expensive. It's worth a lot. Yeah, you can't, you know, once you've lost time, you, you're not going to get it back. Uh, as we all know, so so um, so the Sheikh says. So everybody's in a state of loss. Everybody's in a state of loss who waste the time, who waste their time, ones who waste their time in in those things that don't benefit them, that harm them, and uh, and and being disobedient to Allah and other examples as we come. Like for example, just wasting your time altogether. The Sheikh will come uh, come to this as well. So then we'll continue. وَهَذَا الْوَقْتُ الَّذِي هُوَ رَخِيصٌ عِنْدَ كَثِيرٍ مِنَ النَّاسِ يَتُولُ عَلَيْهِمْ الْوَقْتُ يمولون ويقولون نريد قتل الوقت يأتون بالملهيات أو يسافرون للخارج لقضاء العطلة والوقت أو يضحكون يضحكون ويمزحون لقطع الوقت فهؤلاء الذين قطعوه وضيعوه سيكون خسارة وندامة ندامة عليهم يوم القيامة وهو مصدر سعادتهم لو حافظوا Alayhi. So the Shaykh then says, he says to us, he mentions here and he says to us, he says, so this is the time which is, he says, and this time, uh, to many, it's, um, it's cheap. It's not, it's cheap. It doesn't really hold any value, uh, uh for mo a lot of people. He says, so, uh, you know, they, for example, um, they'll want to take, uh, they'll want to kill time, as they say, kill time. So the Shaykh says they'll want to kill time. For example, with amusements and all these kinds of things and traveling here and there and spending time on the holidays far away and traveling this, that and the other, like this kind of thing. Uh, or for example, laughing away their time and uh, having fun and laughing away their time in that manner as well. So he said, these are the people who are cut off. They've cut themselves off uh and they've wasted, they've cut off this time, they wasted the time, they cut themselves off from benefit, and, and they're the ones who are going to be in a great loss. And in and by that, because of this great loss, they will also therefore uh, uh, be feeling remorseful later because of the effects of wasting this time and not benefiting from it uh, on the day of judgment. And this is, and the Sheikh says that this is, uh, and, and, if they preserve time, if they preserve their time and used it in that which benefited them, and in that which which the Sheikh has mentioned earlier, then it would be a source of happiness for them if they preserved, if they preserved it. But the ones who don't and they waste it, then it's uh, it's just remorse, and they're in a state of loss on the Yom uh, on Yom Al Qiyamah. The Sheikh continues and he says. He says, فَجَمِيعُ uh, بَنِي آدَمْ فِي خَسَارَةٍ وَحَلَاكٍ إِلَّا مَنِ اتَّصَفَ بِأَرْبَعِ صِفَاتٍ هِيَ 
العلم والعمل والدعوة إلى الله والصبر على الأذى فمن, اتص... فمن اتصف بهذه الصفات الأربع نجا من هذه الخسارة ولا يمكن الإيمان بالله إلا بالعلم الذي هو معرفة الله وعمل الصالحات أي عمل الأعمال الصالحة من واجبات من واجبات ومستحبات فاستغلوا وقتهم بعمل الصالحات بما يفيدهم في دينهم ودنياهم حتى العمل الدنيا فيه خير وفيه أجر إذا قصد به الاستعانة على الطاعة فكيف بالعمل الآخرة المهم أنك لا تضيع الوقت بل تستعمله بل تستعمله في شيء يفيدك وينفعك. So the Sheikh then says, says so whoever as uh, whoever is described by these four affairs, um, um, sorry, just go back there. The Sheikh says, so all of the uh, he says, he says all of Bani Adam are in a state of loss and destruction except those who are uh, come under the description of uh, the four affairs that we mentioned, four descriptors. I will mention them al ilm knowledge uh, al amal acting upon that knowledge wa da'watu ila allah calling to allah with that knowledge uh, um, of the deen and a sabr al al adha and having sabr having patience upon um, any harm that come your way or come that uh, come through that person's way so whoever is described with these four uh, descriptors or these descriptions that we mentioned these characteristics then this person is successful he will be successful. So the Sheikh says, so whoever is um, described uh, or uh, can be described with these four characteristics is successful. And he is saved from this loss. Therefore, he's not in the state of loss. And the Sheikh continues and he says, and and the person, uh, Iman can't exist in a, per, uh, uh, in a person. He can't be upon Iman. Uh, uh, and uh, al Iman billah, with Allah, by Allah, you know, I'm an Iman in Allah. Uh, except with knowledge and therefore it's uh, having knowledge of Allah and then uh, 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 the Sheikh mentions وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ and those who act righteous deeds and carry out right, righteous deeds he says i.e. those who uh, um, act out and carry out uh, righteous deeds from that which is obligatory as well as that which is uh, uh, recommended he says so they have profited They've benefited and they've profited from their time with righteous actions, um, uh, and that which obviously benefits them in their deen and in their dunya. Up until the point of acting in the dunya, the uh, uh, their uh, actions for the dunya as well that relate to the dunya. In it is goodness, then in it is a reward as well if they intended by it. Uh, uh, that uh, those actions would help them to um, uh, help them to be obedient and 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 be obedient to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. So he says. So how then uh, w- uh, w- uh, about the you know with the actions or the uh, actions of the akhirah or for the akhirah? He says the point here is that the main point and what's important here is that you don't waste your time. Rather, you use it. In that which benefits you, right? So that's what the uh, Sheikh mentions there. So let's continue. So then the Sheikh he he moves on to he says uh, so he's breaking down Surah Al Asr here as you can see. So he says what are our so bil haqi as you can see where the cursor is here. He says amaru bil ma'roof or umiru bil ma'roof wa nahu anil munkar wa وَدَعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ أَزَّ وَجَلْ وَعَلَّمُوا الْعِلْمَ النَّافِعَ وَنَشَرُوا الْعِلْمَ وَالْخَيْرَ فِي النَّفْسِ فِي النَّاسِ أَسْبَحُوا دُعَاتٍ أَسْبَحُوا دُعَاتٍ إِلَى اللَّهِ أَزَّ وَجَلْ So let's break, let's just take this uh, paragraph and point by point, paragraph by paragraph as well. So what are our sobil haq? We already know what that means. We referred that back to the translation of Surah Al-Asr. So uh, enjoin and order one another with the truth so we've been commanded with doing all that which is good right all that which comes under good well and we have been prohibited from all that which is evil 
and we've also you know been uh you know uh, uh ordered to um call people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala azza wa jal and we've also been ordered to teach beneficial knowledge and spread that knowledge and spread that goodness to the people spread it up until you become a caller to Allah azza wa jal then we continue and the shaykh mentions watawasaw bis sabr sabaru ala ma yanaluhum wa sabaru fi al lughati al habs wal murad bihi huna habs al nafsi ala ta'at Allah wa huwa thalathatu anwa'in al awwal sabr ala ta'at Allah al thani sabr an maharim Allah al thalith sabr ala aqdar Allah so let's just stop there for a second so the shaykh says what uh, so be sabri and we all know what this is but just to remind ourselves uh, enjoin and recommend and advise each other with patience so uh, be so that we be patient uh, uh, and face whatever calamities whatever tests that might come our way anything that comes our way in 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 terms of hardship uh, we are patient upon it and then the shaykh says and sabr patience in the language linguistically it means um uh al-habs uh, habs is like you know uh, being held or you know where you, you you don't do anything you stop like for example you're being in a cell in a room you stop you hold you hold it or you hold something or something's being held and it says the purpose of it here the purpose of it in the surah uh, it means you know restraining yourself restraining your nafs or restraining your soul upon uh, the obedience of Allah so we're being patient upon the obedience of Allah so that's the purpose and the point here and its uh, intention so then the shaykh says to us he says that patience is of three types patience is of three types he says the first type is having patience upon Allah's obedience so whatever Allah's commanded us with in terms of obedience we are patient upon it and we do it. We carry on, we are patient upon it. It says a, a second uh, type of patience is being patient and staying away from uh, uh, the haram. So whatever Allah has uh, prohibited us from doing, then we are patient upon it, as in we are patient upon not doing it. So for example, the first point was um, sabr upon the obedience. So for example, Allah told you to do X, Y and Z, we do it. Then Allah's uh, second point, Allah's told us to not do X, Y, and Z. For example, as other examples, we stay away from it, and that's sabr uh, uh, from uh, the uh, uh, upon the uh, those those things that Allah has prohibited us from. And then the third type of sabr is uh, having sabr, and very very important, having sabr upon the qadr of Allah. So wherever, wherever Allah has ordained, we we are patient upon it. The Sheikh is going to explain this in a, a, a in a very clear way to us, inshallah. So we'll continue. Um, so then the Sheikh says, so uh, the first type of sabr, he says, sabr, uh, Sabrun ala ta'atillah li anna nafsa turid al-kasl wa turid al-raha fala budda an yusabbiraha al-insanu ala ta'ati wa ala salati wa, wa ala al-siyami wa ala al-jihadi fi sabilillahi wa in kanat uh, takrahuhu uh, hadhi al-umur. يصبرها يصبرها ويحبسها على طاعة الله. So the Sheikh says, he says, so the first type of sabr he says is uh, being obedient, upon, uh, 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 being obedient uh, with the commands of Allah. So, for example, he says uh, because the the soul, the soul, it wants to be lazy. This is what the soul wants. This is the uh, the the natural, uh, or it's it's natural state of the soul. It wants to be lazy it wants to be it wants time to relax and just do nothing and rest you know and and so he says therefore it's important that we you know that we kind of culture our soul and nurture our soul uh, upon patience Up, upon patience as in following the commands of Allah and Allah's obedience for example he says like for example prayer we make sure that we pray we get up the times there we need to pray we fast, you know. Uh, um, also, for example, uh, 
you know, jihad in the path of Allah, uh, uh, or even if our souls dislike these affairs, we may we culture nurture our souls to be patient and we restrain our souls so that we are obedient to Allah. Then he says, the Shaykh says, and the second type of sabr, he says, Wathani, sabrun ala muharimillah, and nafsu to read al muharamat wa shahawat inaha, tamilu ilayha wa tanziu ilayha, falabuda an yarbitaha, wa yah basuha an il muharamat, wahade yahtaju ila sabrin, wa laysa mina sahli man un nafsi an il shahawat il muharama, man uh, man laysa indahu sabrun fa inna nafsahu tatagalabu alayhi wa tah uh, wa uh, uh, so then the Sheikh says, he says, and the second point he mentions, he says, sabr upon uh, uh, upon uh, the uh, what we've been forbade. So those things that we, we which are haram, being patient upon that. And the Sheikh then explains and he tells us, he says, the soul it wants. Uh, all that which is haram, it wants to follow its desires, it wants to lean towards those sort of things and be impatient in those things. So he goes, so he says, he says it's incumbent that we tie it, that we restrain it so that it doesn't go towards these al muharramat. And so, therefore, this requires patience. And he says, so, and, if, and it's not something that is easy to uh, prevent the soul uh, from the desires that we might feel, etc. The, 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 the desires that are, that are haram. So, so a person who does not have patience, then his soul will, it will overtake him. It will overtake him. His soul will overtake him and he'll, and he'll start doing and leaning and moving towards the haram. So it's important to restrain the soul, and in a way to train it as well, so that that you 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 are not feeling these kinds of, you know, desires that are going to lead you down the wrong road. Uh, then the Sheikh says, "A thalithu, the third type of sabr." He says, "A sabr, a sabru ala qadari lahi al mu'lima, al masaib alati tusibul insana min mautin, min mauti karibin, aw dia imalin, aw maradin yustibul insan." لا بد أن يصبر على قضاء على قضاء الله وقدره لا يجزع ولا يتسخط بل يحبس اللسان عن النياحة والتسخط ويحبس النفس عن عن الجزع ويحب ويحبس الجوارح عن لتم الخدود وشق الجيوب هذا هو الصبر على مصائب. So the Sheikh is mentioning mentioning um the third type of sabr, and, and we mentioned earlier, and he says, uh, the third type of sabr is having sabr upon um, upon uh, the qadr of Allah, what Allah has ordained, and particularly uh, those things that have been ordained that are painful to us, that are painful for us. And he mentions, the Sheikh says, for example, the calamities that might come our way, uh, for example, you know, um, uh, you know, the death of a, a relative, um, the loss of wealth, um, being uh, becoming ill with a with a disease or an illness, um, it, the Sheikh says uh, that it's important and incumbent that we are patient upon what Allah has ordained and what He has decided, and that we do not become impatient, and that we don't become angry and upset, and that we don't. And this is common amongst uh, some types of people where in, uh, the Sheikh mentions an niyaha here, for example, you know, crying out loud and shouting and in this kind of fashion. Rather, the Sheikh says it's upon us to restrain our souls away from uh, impatience and these kinds of actions. And that we control and restrain our limbs from um, going past the, uh, or you know, going past the hudud or the limits that Allah has set, and He says this is 
uh, sabr upon any type of calamity. So, and having sabr upon what Allah has ordained for us. And that's part of our iman as well. Al-Qadr. Having iman in Al-Qadr, the good of it and the bad of it. Then the Shaykh continues and he says, أَمَّا الْمَعَائِبْ فَلَا يَسْبِرُ عَلَيْهَا بَلْ يَتُوبُ uh, بَلْ يَتُوبُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَيَنْفِرُ مِنْهَا وَلَكِنْ إِنْدَ الْمَصَائِبَ الَّتِي لَا uh, لَا دَخْلْ uh, لَا دَخْلٌ لَكْ فِيهَا بَلْ هِيَا مِنَ اللَّهِ الزَّوَجَلْ قَدَّرَهَا لَيْكَ اِبْتِلَاءً وَامْتِحَانًا أَوْ عُقُوبَةً لَكْ عَلَى ذُنُوبٍ فَعَلْتَهَا كَمَا فِي قَوْلِهِ تَعَالَى وَمَا أَصَابَكُمْ مِنْ مُسِيبَةٍ فَبِمَا كَسَبَتْ أَيْدِيكُمْ وَيَعْفُوا عَنْ كَثِيرٍ فَإِذَا حَسَلَتْ لِلْمُسْلِمْ مُسِيبَةٍ في نفسي أو مالي أو ولده أو قريبه أو أحد أو أحد إخوانه من المسلمين فعليه بالصبر والاحتساب قال تعالى الذين إذا أصابتهم مصيبة قالوا إن لله وإن إليه راجعون أولئك عليهم سلوات من ربهم ورحمة وأولئك هم المهتدون <تصفيق> هذا هو الصبر ومن ذلك الصبر على الأذى في دعوة إلى الله عز وجل فإن هذا من المصائب فعليك أن فعليك أن تصبر على ما تلقى من الأذى في سبيل الخير ولا تنثني عن فعل الخير لأن بعض الناس يريد الفعل الخير لكن إذا واجهه شيء يكرهه قال ليس من الواجب لي أن أدخل نفسي في هذه الأمور ثم يترك التعليم إن كان مؤلما يترك دعوة إلى الله يترك الخطابة يترك الخطابة إن كان خطيب خطيب مسجد يترك الإبامة المسجد يترك الأمر بالمعروف والنهي عن المنكر هذا لم يصبر على ما ناله من الأذى. so that's quite a long paragraph so let's go back so the sheikh says says أمل معيب so he begins he says so for example um, <clears throat> uh, for example, if you sin or make a mistake or these sort of things, it says then uh, you don't uh, be patient or be have patience upon that. Rather, you rush to seeking forgiveness from Allah. So you make a mistake; it's a sin. For example, as just one example, then you know you turn to Allah asap asap. You turn to Allah. You ask Allah for forgiveness. Don't be hanging around. In that situation, so Sheikh makes a bit of a distinction to help us understand. He says, so, and, and, and you know, and you do that, and then the Sheikh continues and he says, uh, however, uh, whenever a calamity strike um, uh, that you have no control over, right? Then he says that that is from Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah has ordained that, preordained that is from His Qadr upon you uh, to test you, to trial you. Uh, to punish you or to punish you. Uh, to punish you, for example, if it was a, a sin that you might have committed or whatever, it may be a punishment to then absolve you of that sin. Okay? So it can either be a test, a trial, or punishment, as mentioned here by the Shaykh. Then the Shaykh mentions the Quran ayah, which we mentioned. This is from Surah, Surah to Shura. So if we go to Surah to Shura, verse 30. Um, uh, let's go to verse 30. Uh, Surah to Shura. Let's read the whole ayah. And whatever of misfortune befalls you, it is because of what your hands have earned. And he pardons much. So, um, you can all refer to that yourselves as well um, for further explanations on that, on tafsir as well. Um, then the shaykh continues and he says, So if a Muslim uh, has uh, ended up falling upon, uh, you know, or you know, has obtained or struck by a uh, calamity, uh, for example, uh, either in himself, or his wealth, or his children, uh, or his relatives, or any of his brothers, for example, that he knows from his Muslim brothers, from the Muslimin. So upon him is having patience, being patience, and being patient, and him knowing that him being patient in these affairs, he, Allah will reward him, and that there's a, that there's a reward in at the end of that for him. Then uh, the Sheikh quotes another ayah which we read. And this is from Surah Al-Baqarah, 
uh, which I believe we mentioned before in some previous lessons uh, in the other books that we covered. We will look at it again. Verse 156 to 157. The, uh, the Sheikh mentions the ayah and the translation of it is, Who, when afflicted with calamity, say, Truly to Allah we belong, and truly to Him we shall return. They are those on whom are the sala uh, uh, salawat, i.e. blessings, etc., i.e. who are blessed and will be forgiven from their Lord. And they are those who receive His mercy, and it is they who are the guided ones. So as you can see from there, it's very clear for us. So he continues and he says, so he says, therefore, he, sa he says, this is sabr, this is patience. And having, and from that is having patience upon any harms that we encounter, uh, encounter, uh, encounter while we are calling to Allah's religion. He says, so indeed, uh, from uh, those calamities, uh, are these, uh, for indeed, some in the examples we mentioned are from calamities. So he says, upon you uh, is that you be patient upon that which of harm comes your way while you are in the sabil of khair, while you are treading the path of khair. And he also mentions here, the Sheikh mentions, he mentions that also don't, um, <clears throat> don't turn away. So don't move away from that, uh, from that which is good. So if you're experiencing these harms, don't turn away from, from acting uh, from the from good actions, don't turn away from them, because he, he says he, he gives example. He says because some of the people, they want good, of course you know they want good. However, when they are faced with a thing that they may dislike, it is said, well he says the person might say he says, oh uh, this is not from uh, what's obligatory upon me. Uh, I entered myself upon these affairs myself. Uh, then he'll leave, for example, he'll leave teaching. If he's a teacher, he'll stop teaching people. He'll stop teaching people the deen if he's a teacher, for example. Or uh, he'll he'll stop calling people to Allah if he's a caller. Um, or a uh, he'll stop, uh, he'll leave off, um, uh, you know, performing the khutbahs if he's a khatib of a masjid, for example. If he's a, you know, you know he'll stop giving sermons if he's the one who gives the sermons at the masjid, for example. He'll, uh, for example, if he's an imam of the masjid, he'll leave that if he faces harm. Uh, he'll leave these affairs. He'll leave, uh, you know, uh, commanding with the good and for, for forbidding the evil. And then the shaykh says, this kind of description is a person that is not patient upon uh, that which he has received of, um, uh, of, of harm that may come his way. So then the Sheikh continues and he says, <clears throat> he says, وَإِذَا وَإِذَا كُنْتَ مُخْتِئًا عَلَيْكَ بِالرُّجُوءِ إِلَى الْحَقِّ وَالسَّوَابِ أَمَّا إِنْ إِنْ كُنْتَ أَلَى حَقٍ وَلَمْ تُخْتِئْ فَعَلَيْكَ بِالصَّبْرِ وَالْإِحْتِسَابِ وَاسْتَشْعَرْ أَنْ أَنَّ هَذَا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ يَزَّ وَجَلْ وَأَنَّكَ مَأْجُورَ عَلَيْهِ وتذكر ما حصل للأنبياء عليهم الصلاة والسلام من الأداء وكيف صبروا وجاهدوا في سبيل الله حتى نصرهم الله عز وجل. Right. So let's just stop there. So the Sheikh says he says so if so we're looking at two sides now. So he says the Sheikh says if you were uh, in error, if you made errors. Then upon you is that you return to the truth and that which is correct and you stick to it. As for if you were upon the truth and you did not make any mistakes or errors and you know you were on point, if you were that type of person, then upon you is being patient and you know, um, uh, being patient and hoping for a reward because of your patience that you'll be rewarded for that and that you feel and that you make yourself feel. That you know, and that you remind yourself and make yourself feel, you know, in your heart that that is in the path of Allah Azza wa Jal. That you know, you're doing this path, path, uh, you're in the path of uh, Allah, uh, Allah Azza wa Jal, and you're doing it for Allah for the reward. So you know, you remind yourself of these, and you feel that, and that you also uh, rem remind yourself, you remind yourself, and remember, and what the uh, the prophets of Allah. Alayhi salatu wassalam, what they endured 
of harm and that and how and how they were patient and they strove in the path of Allah up until Allah helped them and uh, made them victorious so you know this is a good reminder for us then the shaykh continues and he says قال الشافعي رحمه الله لو ما أنزل الله حجة على خلقه إلا هذه سورة لكفتهم. so now then the sheikh we're getting towards the end here so we nearly finish we'll finish over here inshallah. um we've got another ten minutes I think we'll just finish on the hour then so we finish I just wanted to make sure that we finish this because this is a tafsir of سوره الاس it's good to have it all in one lesson and take it in one sitting. so then the sheikh said he quotes Imam Shafi رحمه الله and he, and, and he mentions here that the Imam Shafi, rahimahullah, said that if Allah had sent this surah, surah al-Asr, it would be enough of a proof and it, uh, upon the creation, us al-insan and the jinn, upon the creation, um, uh, and that it would suffice them. So uh, then the Sheikh explains this. So he continues, he says, قول هو الشافي, uh, هو الإمام محمد بن إدريس الشافي نسبة إلى جده الرابع اسمه شافع وهو من قريش من بني المطلب توفي سنة أربع ومائتين بعد الهجرة وهو أحد الأئمة الأربعة وقال هذه المقالة لأن الله بيّن في هذه السورة في هذه السورة أسباب الشقاوة وأسباب السعادة so then the Sheikh says, he says, so this is the speech of a Shafi that we just read. And he says he is the Imam Muhammad ibn Idris Shafi. Uh, and uh, the name uh, Shafi or Shafi is, is connected to uh, uh, one of his uh, great grandfathers, um, fourth one in the line of great grandfathers whose name was Shafi. And, and uh, Al Imam Shafi is from Qur the Quraysh, the tribe of Qur the Quraysh. Uh, and he's from Al Bani Al Muttalib, and he passed away in the year 204 after Hijrah. And he is uh, one of the uh, four well known Imams. Uh, and he said this speech, what we just read, uh, because Allah, had cl Allah clarified in this surah, in Surah Al Asr, the, the reasons, the reasons uh, of, uh, uh, you know, the reasons of Shaqtawa or uh, uh, you know, uh, get, you know, being tired and wretched, uh, and sad, and all the negative that's related to that, and the reasons for happiness. So the both opposites. So sadness and happiness. Let's keep it simple. Sadness and happiness. That this surah shows us the reasons of of why people are sad and why people are happy. And the Sheikh then mentions, he continues, says, فَأَسْبَابُ السَّعَادَ أَنْ يَتَّسِفَ الْإِنسَانَ بِهَذِي الصِّفَاتِ الْأَرْبَعَ الْإِلْمُ وَالْعَمَلُ وَالْدَعْوَةِ وَالصَّبْرَ لِلْأَذَى فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى فَقَامَتِ الْحُجَّةِ مِنَ اللَّهِ عَلَى خَلْقِهِ بِهَذِي سُورَةِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ سُبْحَانَهُ يَقُولُ لَهُمْ إِنِّي قَدْ بَيَّنْتُ لَكُمْ أسباب السعادة في هذه سورة القصيرة المختصرة. So then the Sheikh breaks it down. So he says, okay, so let's look at the points of happiness. He says, so the reasons of happiness are that uh, uh, that the that the insan are described, or the people, the hu hum humankind, mankind is described with these four affairs, these four points or descriptors, as we mentioned earlier on, descriptions, characteristics, knowledge, action, calling to that, and being patient upon any harms we encounter. In the path of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, so the Sheikh says that uh, that the that the uh, the proof has been established from Allah upon His creation. This is the proof that's been established upon us by this surah, Surah Al Asr. So uh, it says here that Allah, indeed Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He says uh, to them, He says, "Indeed, I have clarified to you the the ways and the reasons of happiness in this surah." The short surah. So then the Shaykh continues. He says, "Well, Quran, all of it, and Sunnah, they are the details of these four matters. But this surah is the sum of the reasons for happiness. So it is the sum of the reasons for happiness. So it is the sum of the reasons for happiness. So it is the sum of the reasons for happiness. So it is the sum of the reasons for happiness. So it is the sum of the reasons for happiness. So it is the sum of the reasons for happiness. So it is the sum
وبقية نصوص القرآن وسنة مفصلة ومبينة لهذه المسائل الأربعة وليس معنى كلام شافي أن هذه سورة تكفي الناس لو ما أنزل الله غيرها لكنها أقامت الحجة عليهم لأن الله بين فيها أسباب سعادة وأسباب وأسباب الشقاوة وقال البخاري um, I think there's a bit of a cut out here in this book uh, that isn't uh, clear so we'll just I'll go back to my other book just hold on a second so he mentions here he says ولكنها أقامت الهجة عليهم لأن الله بين فيها أسباب سعادة وأسباب شقاوة فلا أحد يوم القيامة يقول أنا لا أعرف أسباب سعادة ولا أعرف أسباب الشقاوة وهو يقرأ هذه سورة المختصرة الوجيزة so then the shaykh says that um, he says that the Quran, all of it, and the Sunnah as well, they both are detailed. You know, they, they, they detail these four affairs that we're discussing. They detail these four affairs in much more detail than we've dis- uh, we covered. But uh, as the Sheikh mentions, he says, however, he says this surah, um, it, it, it clarifies the reasons of happiness in a general way. Right? Uh, and, it also, and, it, and it also brings the proof upon the creation. It's a proof upon the creation. Uh, and 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 the remaining and and the rest uh, or uh, and and the rest of the uh, uh, Quranic texts and from the Sunnah as well are all uh, detailed and and clarifying detail these four affairs. And the Sheikh says that it's not and it, and it doesn't mean what we're mentioning here. It doesn't mean that the speech of Shafi rahimahullah uh, uh, is that you know the surah uh, uh, this surah al Asr is enough for us and that's it. We don't need to turn anywhere else to the Quran or the Sunnah. It says it doesn't mean that. Uh, it, it doesn't actually mean that. Rather, it's a focus upon that the proof has been established from the meanings and taking away the meanings of surah and what's intended. It says that Allah clarified in the in in that surah, surah al asr, the reasons for saada, uh, uh, happiness, and the reasons for sadness. Um, and so, um, and so, then it's a proof upon us. We can't say on the day of judgment, oh, um, that oh, we, uh, we didn't know the reasons of happiness and success. Uh, and we didn't know the reasons of uh, sadness and loss. Actually, it's been clarified to us in this surah, right? So that's what the Sheikh says. So, so it's it's a proof upon us, and also it's a way for us to it's a, it's a it's a guide to help us. So then the Sheikh uh, continues and says, "Waqal al-Bukhari rahmahullah taala babul ilm qabl al-qawl al-amal." So. Okay, we'll just finish this last paragraph off. وقال البخاري رحمه الله تعالى باب العلم قبل القول والعمل والدليل فعلم أنه لا إله إلا الله واستغفر لذنبك وللمؤمنين فبدأ بالعلم قبل القول والعمل. So then the Sheikh says, uh, and Bukhari, uh, uh, you know the author of Sahih al Bukhari says, uh, says al Bukhari said رحمه الله ما لازم يصيب يبانم. He said. Uh, so in, in, in Bukhari, the book, the Hadith book Bukhari, there's a chapter there called Al-Ilm Qabl Al-Qawl Wal-Amal. And this is also helping us to consolidate what we've learned and the points we've taken. That also in there it mentions that knowledge is before speech and action. So you have to have knowledge before you talk and you act or you speak and you act. You must have knowledge first. That's the foundation, the prime matter here. And then uh, and, the, and the evidence is from the ayah here. No, no. So it's Fa'alam an Know that there is none worthy of worship in truth except Allah alone, and asks and seek uh, uh, forgiveness from your sins, and for the mu'mineen, and for the believers. So this is Surah Muhammad verse nineteen. You can have a look at it yourselves uh, if you wish to later on. So the Sheikh says so uh, he began uh, so he began this chapter, this particular chapter in Sahih Bukhari, uh, with knowledge is uh, knowledge is before speech and action. Uh, and and the Sheikh continues and he says, وَقَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى وَاسْتَغْفِرْ هَذَا هُوَ الْعَمَلُ بَدَعَ سُبْحَانُهُ بِالْعِلْمُ قَبْلَ الْعَمَلُ لِأَنَّ الْعَمَلُ إِذَا كَانَ عَلَى جَهْلٍ فَإِنَّهُ لَا يَنْفَعَ صَحِبَهُ فَيَبْدُوا الْإِنسَانَ بِالْعِلْمِ أَوْلًا ثُمَّ يَعْمَلُ بِمَا عَلَمَهُ بِمَا عَلَمَهُ هَذَا هُوَ هُوَ الْأَسَاسِ So then the Sheikh says and also mentions the particular point in the ayah up here, وَاسْتَغْفِرْ and seek forgiveness and seek forgiveness and and the Sheikh says he says that uh, this is action because also when you seek forgiveness, it's an action, isn't it? You're, you're asking forgiveness, you're acting out, it's an action. Uh, so, uh, it says uh, that Allah began with ilm first in the ayah, it starts with ilm, fa'lam, ilm, isn't it? So, 
begun with ilm before action because acting uh, uh, upon ignorance without knowledge upon ignorance it doesn't benefit the person who's acting upon that so the person the insan the human the, the mankind mankind person he begins with knowledge firstly then he acts upon it what he's learned he says this is the foundation and the basis so we'll stop there inshallah barakallahu feek and uh, inshallah I'll see you guys uh, next week in next week's lesson same time bi idnillahi ta'ala subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta wa astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh